if you want to play a game, you have to pay money right now. And so a kid that wants to play Minecraft has to pay Microsoft $10 a month if they want Microsoft to host it for them. And then only 11 kids can play at a time in that world. That little shared world only allows 11 kids at a time. And to a kid, $10 a month is a lot of money. Or they can host it themselves, but then one kid is the dictator that has complete control of the world. It would be great if you could just have shared worlds for free and not have to worry about paying for it. And everyone who's part of it is just part of it. And it can grow to a million people or it can be three people. In addition to the routine work which takes place here, experimentation is underway to develop a new technique of computer usage called time sharing. At consoles like this one, located in laboratories and offices throughout New England, hundreds of people will one day be able to use tomorrow's computer simultaneously. Well, what we are trying to develop is a new scheme of using the computer, which we call time sharing, which consists of attaching a large number of consoles to the central computer. You don't have to think about which server is going to be holding it. You just, you know, wave your hands and you have a world of your own. I don't, I don't even know what social media is. I don't know what, what servers are. I just know that I wanted a shared world and I wanted to invite my friend. And now the two of us are in this shared world. This is it. Probably good to have some clarity on why centralized platforms emerged to begin with. And in my mind, the explanation is actually pretty simple. One, people don't want to run their own servers and never will. How many of you complain about running Daedalus nodes, right? You know, oh, Daedalus is not a good user experience. Well, that, you're running a server, actually. Think about it. But you know, in the future, it's going to be the case that, that computers are so cheap and so easy to make that you can make them the size of a grain of sand, complete with a megabyte of RAM. You're going to buy them by the, by, by the bushel, I suppose. You can pour them into your concrete. Okay, you can buy your concrete by a mega flop, and then you have a wall that's smart. What do we know about memory? It's cheap. I got a thumb drive here. Uh, what is it? I don't know. Probably um, five gigabytes. No, it wouldn't be five, would it? Eight gigabytes? Maybe eight, maybe 16. I really don't know. I don't use it. I just keep it in my pocket because uh, it's fun to have eight gigabytes in your pocket. <laughs> I know. Eight gigabytes in my pocket. How many bits is that? 64 bits billion bits in my pocket the premise for web one was that everyone on the internet would be both a publisher and consumer of content as well as a publisher and consumer of infrastructure we'd all have our own web server with our own website however and i don't think this can be emphasized enough that is not what people want and one of the unfortunate things that happens is that new, when you try to talk about it and people make an effort on it, they usually transform it back into news. So for instance, we did this as a way of boosting mankind. It was all about learning by doing. But in fact, almost everybody in the world uses it only as a consumable device for their own convenience. In fact, people only value them as, as much as they value their television sets and they use them roughly the way they use their television sets.